Okay, I'm back here. I'm on problem number four, working through my 2007 algebra based physics final exam just to see how things have changed and to solve the problems. Uh, I'm not going into super detail uh, unless I have to. Uh, I'm trying to use the space I provided on there and let's just see what happens, see how I've changed. Okay, so here's the problem. Let me turn off the camera. A 10 gram dart is loaded into a dart gun. That's fine. The dart gun is powered by a spring with a spring constant of 30 newtons per meter. That's fine, kind of high, but nah, I guess it's okay. When the dart is loaded, the spring is compressed 15 centimeters. If the dart is shot straight up, how high will it go? Oh, this is actually a good problem. Okay, so let's start right here. And then here is my spring, and there's my dart, and this is 0.15 meters, 15 centimeters. Well, that's pretty, pretty big spring dart. You can tell I made up the question, right? Because that's a kind of an unrealistic number. And then it gets launched right here. So this is V1. V2 is moving this way and it goes up here. And this is V3 equals zero equals zero. So we actually have three stages, right? It starts from rest, it speeds up to here, and then it moves up here under the influence of gravity. Uh, so how high will it go is ambiguous because how high from where? Is it is it the distance from here to there or is it distance from here to there? I'm going to say uh, this is y equals zero and I want to find y3 equals. How high is it right there? I'll tell you. If a student did it either way on the problem. I hope 2007 Rhett Elaine would still give the student credit if they did it right here. If I if I took off points because they picked a, they interpreted the question wrong, then I'm a bad person. Okay, not them, because I wrote the question ambiguously. Uh, so let's say spring constant K is 30 newtons per meter. Uh, mass is 10 grams, so 0 0.01 kilograms. That's right, 100. That's right, uh, and then. This we'll call this delta. Let's call it s equals 0.15 meters. S is this distance right here, the distance it's compressed. Now, this is a, a problem. Again, you can do this multiple ways. If if you want to find out how fast this the mat the dart's going right here, uh, you have a problem because the force the spring pushes changes. Right? Remember the magnitude of a spring force is f is equal to k times s. So the less this gets compressed, the less the force on it. And so it's a non-constant force situation. Uh, you can solve it. You can, you could do the average force and that would work. There's a couple tricks you could integrate. Uh, but the best way is to not do that at all. Instead, since we don't care about time in the whole situation, we should use the work energy principle. So I'm going to use work as a change in energy. Uh, the first thing I need to do is to declare my system. Let's say it's the dart plus spring plus earth. So since there's a dart in the system, I can, I'm going to have changes in kinetic energy. Uh, the, since there's a spring in the system, I can have changes in elastic potential energy. And then because the earth is in there with the dart, I can have change in gravitational potential energy. But what is outside of the system that does work? Nothing. Nothing is exerting forces on my system. So there's no work done. So I have zero equals the change in kinetic energy plus the change in spring potential energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy. So kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Uh, spring potential energy is one half ks squared and gravitational potential energy is mgy. Now both of these two don't really matter. It's only changes of potential that we actually measure, so but I called that y equals zero so I can proceed. Okay. So we could use this to find the velocity right there, but who cares, right? I can just go straight from here to there. So let's do that. So let's say zero equals the change in kinetic. Well it's at rest there, it's at rest there. So that's going to be zero. Plus the change in spring potential energy. So this is going to be plus uh, U3 minus U1 plus 
I, I called these u3 minus u1. That's spring and that's gravity. Okay, so let's put in our values here. So that's gonna be, I'll leave off the zero. U3, what's the potential energy in the spring up here? Zero, right? Because the springs, it's not a connected to the spring anymore. So this is gonna be uh, zero, that's zero, minus the spring potential energy at the beginning, which is one half K S1 squared. That's how much energy stored in there. Now, what about this one? What's U3 for gravity? Uh, up here, it's gonna be, uh, I did say that was zero. Okay, well, I messed up, that's fine. This is gonna be uh, M G Y3, which is what we're looking for, minus M G negative S1. Right, because it starts down here 0.15 meters below my origin. So I'm gonna have to take that into account. Now I wanna solve this for Y3. So I'm gonna say, uh, add that to the other side, add that to the other side, I get MG Y3 equals, oh, that's a negative, negative MGS1, right? Cause this is, those, those make positive and move to the other side, it's negative. And then plus one half K S1 squared. Now, if I solve that for Y3, I get Y3, divide everything by MG, I get negative S1 plus K S1 1 squared over 2 MG. Because okay, so let's put, put that in in Python. Here's my leftover stuff from the last problem. Okay, so I'm going to put in m equals zero point oh, m equals zero point zero one, k equals thirty, s equals point one five, g equals nine point eight. So y three equals negative s plus. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that negative s for a second there. Okay, plus k times s squared divided by parentheses two times m times g. Print y3. So 3.29 meters. Now, what about that minus 0.15, right? I, that's that that the difference between how far the spring moved. Uh, if, if I didn't include that, then it would have gone higher. M, I'm looking back over here. Let's see, so that's gonna be M minus a negative, so plus. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, now, so you could be off by a, a 0.15 if you redefined, if you did it from where the spring started, where the dart started to where how I went. But yeah, that's a pretty big compression. 15 centimeters, it's like, that's like this, right? That's how far my dart was compressed. It's kind of a, a weird dart gun. But whatever, it shows you that I didn't really think about things beforehand. Uh, but overall, I think it's an okay problem. Okay, we'll do another problem.